today I'm going to be talking about what to do if you're in crisis and you're feeling very suicidal. And by the title of the video, you must have seen that this video is specifically for those of you who are currently suicidal and currently facing those ordeals. This is coming from someone who is diagnosed with chronic and clinical depression and has actually also been in your shoes. I have also attempted to take my life and I'm still here and I'm telling you my story, a little bit of it, but also what to do when you are in crisis and I'm pleading you, imploring you to please stay and please listen. Suicide is an absolute tragedy and I don't think many people comprehend how severe a state of mind needs to be to contemplate taking their life, to contemplate leaving this world permanently. Um, obviously everyone recognizes that suicide is a tragedy that takes lives every year, day, and second, but once the tragedy aspect of it fades, people start pointing fingers and accusing those who have passed thinking that it is some flaw of their own, some innate weakness on their part, some vulnerability that has robbed them of their lives and will to carry on. I think the term commit suicide in itself is actually quite inflammatory because it kind of perpetuates this stigma and this notion that those who have died by suicide are criminals or should be criminalized in a way and it's some kind of malice, some kind of um, stain on society. And while I will never, ever condone suicide or any self-harm behavior, I need to, to let everyone know out there that you are not bad. You are not innately, inherently wrong for having these thoughts, for having these urges, and you are not less than anyone else for struggling and for being suicidal. Suicide happens when People feel like they have no choice. People feel like they have nothing to live for. And that's where they're wrong. You may feel like you're worthless, like you don't matter, that your existence is a stain on this world, that your existence is null and void and it does not matter what you do or how you feel. But I'm here to tell you once again that you are wrong. Just think of all of the things you look forward to before all of the little achievements that you praised yourself for, or all of the little things you wanted to accomplish in life before um, the illness of depression hit you, before the suicidality hit you. And those little things may have even been a few hours ago or a few days ago. Depression is tricky like that because um, you, could be, you could be okay and then all of a sudden you can be bombarded by like a bark barrage of negative thoughts and impulses and suddenly you don't want to be here anymore. It could be years from, from now. It could be the last time you felt true joy and ambition could have been years ago or months ago. That doesn't matter. I want you to think of one thing that makes you happy right now. It could be seeing a dog wobble around on the street the other day. It could be something from when you were younger, like wanting to be an astronaut, for example. Now, those ambitions, those smiles, those causes of joy, big or small, are important, and they mean something to you, whether you may now see that or not. But if you leave, you will never have the chance, you will never have the opportunity to experience those things again. Those things will be taken away from you forever. What suicide does is that it does not kill the negativity, it does not kill the pain. It transmits it to others, which I will address shortly. But it eliminates the possibility of there ever being a change, of there ever being a positive change in your life. And I know this may be redundant, but... And I don't like to talk about negative emotions in a context like this, but sometimes something negative or toxic can um, inspire some positivity. And in this regard, I mean guilt. Guilt is a very negative emotion, and guilt is something that is pervasive and prevents us from feeling like we are worthy, and it keeps us in a cycle. 
but sometimes guilt can also be healthy because it prevents us from doing things that will hurt ourselves or others. Remorse is a powerful tool. I will not lie and say that any reason that I'm here is mine alone because it's not. Um, I have lived many years of my life out of guilt because I don't want my loved ones to go through their personal guilt of losing me and thinking that they could have done something, they could have changed something, they could have been there for me more, they could have reached out to me more. And guilt is a harrowing thing to live with. It becomes toxic over time and that becomes toxic, toxic shame. And what that is, is an overall feeling that whatever you do is wrong or you have to apologize for everything. I don't want anyone to go through that. And think of the people around you that you truly love that you would not like to hurt or if their absence were to occur for whatever reason how you would feel and especially if that absence was permanent. Think of just those closest to you, those who you dearly dearly care about and love and if they suddenly went away this manner in this way you would blame yourself, absolutely, because it's in human nature to do that. And maybe it's justifiable too, because you may often feel that people turn a blind eye to these things, but I'm here to tell you otherwise, I do care, and many people care. Those who love you truly care. If they have a hard time expressing that, it's because mental illness is very stigmatized, and mental illness is something that we don't address so much, we don't talk about so much, but they do care. Maybe they don't have the tools or resources, or they don't have the know-how or the language they need to really talk to you about those things, but they care, and I promise they do. So don't take them not addressing how you feel in terms of suicidality or mental illness as inherently something that suggests that they don't care, because I promise that they do, and there will always be people out there who care. Let's look at some other examples in which we can, yeah, in which, in which we can ponder how suicide is not a good decision. It's not something that you can spontaneously do because you are currently in a negative state of mind. What depression does is that it masks our emotions and feelings with this overlapping sense of negativity directed at ourselves, at others around us, and at the world around us too. It's a feeling of hopelessness. It's a feeling of constant pain and just absolute darkness and negativity that mostly surrounds you and many times you think it emanates from you. Um, this may make you feel like your achievements or your qualities are not present or they're not good enough. It may feel as if you are not good enough, but think about those dearest to you. Again, I will have you do that exercise with me again. Think about how, for example, your best friend is a great musician, or how your mom is a fantastic cook, how your hero, for example, or your inspiration or idol is a compassionate person. Think about how your partner is a great listener. Now tell them that they aren't those things. Strip that away from them. It doesn't make sense to do that, right? Because you know factually, objectively, that they have these qualities and these attributes that are very real and that you love them for. Now, if they suddenly came to you and said, I am terrible at listening, I'm terrible at cooking, I am a terrible human being who does not deserve to be here, your instant reaction would be, no, you're wrong, because I know, I personally do know that you are very gifted and talented at these things, and you make the world and my life a better place um, to be in. And so that's what we will do for ourselves. We will switch that around. We may not see ourselves in the same light as other people do, and I guarantee you that people see you in a much more beautiful and positive way than you do currently. And that is okay because you are in the grips of depression and depression does that. It disguises you from who you truly are for yourself. But those around you still know those qualities you hold and they cherish you for it. So just the way you love qualities in other people, just know that other people love those things in you. They could be small things, like the way you smile, the spark in your eye that comes up when you see your favorite movie, or when you see um, your favorite person, 
or it could be an achievement, how you are fantastic at a certain thing. Anything. And guilt, again, is a very, very overarching feeling. Um, you never know what someone means to you until they're gone. And suicide is so heart-wrenching that even those you don't know personally may have left an, a huge impact on your life. I, and this may sound really, really trivial to a lot of you, but I lost my hero three years ago, Chester Bennington. I wear his necklace every day and have been for three years, um, which is a testament to how much I love him, but also that he will be in my heart forever, and I miss him dearly. I never met this man. I never spoke to him. I didn't know him on a personal level, but I felt like I knew him because he was compassionate, he was generous, he was kind, he was strong, he was courageous, and he was that source of strength for me right from the time that I was a scared and vulnerable 13-year-old. I'm 22 now, and I still hold those same feelings for him. He still impacts me in the same positive way that he used to, but now I feel like my world has been flipped upside down because that emblem of strength has been taken away from me. I feel like Chester has been the death of hope for me because I attributed so much of that hope in him. And the beauty of suffering, this may sound dark and a little silly, but the beauty of suffering is that it inspires other people. When you see someone grappling with the same horrendous darkness that you were, the same horrid delusions or negative thoughts or self-harm urges or inability to cope or dysfunctionality, you realize that, hey, I'm not alone. These things happen and they happen to those who I love or those who I look up to. He was one of those people for me and now I have so many people in my life who are those people for me. Um, you being here right now Breathing, watching this video right here, right now, is a testament to the fact that there is hope. Because someone might have already taken their life, wishing they could be in your position now so that they could go back and make amends, or they could still be here. Um, just being here, simply breathing and waking up every day, no matter how hard the days are, no matter how much of a task every day seems like, just breathing and living seems like such a burden and a chore sometimes but you being here is a sign of hope for people who are struggling because they look at you and they think hey if they can do it so can i and i promise you that if i can still be here so can you and this is not a pat on the back on my end for myself it's merely saying that you all are capable you are absolutely capable because if someone as small as me can still be in this world anyone can you have unlimited potential within you do not let depression take that away from you do not let depression deceive you into thinking that you are not important enough to not be here anymore and just lastly i want to say that be here for the people who may see those things in you if you're incapable of right now i understand and that is okay but I promise you that there's so much goodness in you and you do matter and you are cherished and you are valuable and you are valid and your feelings do matter and people care and I care. You are a miracle. This may sound cheesy, it may sound redundant, you may have heard it a million times, but you are so much more than flesh and bone and blood. You are so much more than the intricate circuitry that's in you. You are so much more than the structure of bones that holds you together. You are so much more than the plasma, the cells, that little concoction, the fluids in you that rush and hold you as one being. You are more than that. You are something that's beating right here, telling people that there is hope, there is light, there is positivity, and there is compassion. At the end of the day, the most important gift that you can give anyone is compassion. You could look at someone on the street and if they're having a hard day and you smile at them or you tell them to have a good day, that could change their day around. Maybe they're grappling with the same thoughts you are, but you say, hey, you're beautiful and you matter. 
that may change their mind frame because they may think, okay, I can step back from the depressive thoughts I have right now and think, hey, maybe someone sees something in me that I don't, or maybe people mean well. Maybe the world is not that much of a scary, dark place. Maybe there's hope and light and there's good people in, in the world. And I failed to see that, but this was a reminder. I promise that you matter. And please, please, please be safe. Reaching out can be very hard, and if you can't reach out to a loved one right now, thank you for watching this, and thank you for being here with me to see this. I will be linking a list of international suicide hotlines in the description if you need them. Please do contact them. If not, leave the comments down below, leave your story, your struggle, and I will try personally addressing as many of them as I possibly can. Lastly, I will leave the video with a quote by Chester Bennington from one of his last songs, One More Light. And the lyrics go, who cares if one more light goes out in a sky of a million stars, it flickers. Who cares if someone's time runs out, if a moment is all we are, or quicker. Who cares if one more light goes out, well I do. Thank you for being here and thank you for watching. Please stay, you are stronger than you think.